each standards body thinks of itself, they don't do this explicitly and they don't do it, you know, uh, uh, purposefully, but in effect, each standards body that exists generally around the world thinks of itself as operating in isolation and it's the center of its own world, whether it's the ITF, whether it's the IEEE, whether it's ISO, whether it's uh, anything else. And so cooperation across standards bodies is a awkward, ungainly process that does not have any um, standards of its own. So um, the novel thought is, suppose we ask each standards body to rethink itself in terms of not only uh, developing its own standards, but being constructed and having processes in place that are designed to interact with other standards bodies. And uh, rather than having each one of them in a, uh, do that for themselves, one could imagine trying to lay out what are the elements of cooperation and have kind of a standard for standards body interactions. Um, so that sounds kind of abstract and, and uh, sort of ultra philosophical. But uh, the elements are probably not all that complicated. They are, uh, as I alluded, um, elements of technical interchange, uh, access to the various documents that are involved, who's allowed to participate, who's allowed to have access after the fact, what are the consensus processes, what are the publication processes. <coughs> and one could lay out, I'm imagining, um, a, a kind of template as to what those elements have to be and then get some number of standards bodies, not going to get them all at once, uh, to decide that, yeah, cooperation across standards bodies is probably more uh, of a normal thing rather than an exceptional thing, something to plan for in advance and lay out uh, standards for standards, if you will.